slot of the night. Eh? <laughs> Right, well, good evening, everybody. My name is, is Anthony Sanchez, as you can see from the board behind me. Um, I promise I won't keep you for longer than about five or ten minutes, this should take, so thank you. Right, so my, my task this evening was to talk about questioning and questioning techniques. I, it was originally going to be coaching, so I do apologise if you were waiting right to the very end to hear about coaching. I'm sorry, it's questioning. Um, we had a really interesting and engaging CPD session at the, at the start of this term um, regarding questioning. We looked at, uh, Ian Class has already talked about Rosenshine, but we looked at some of Rosenshine's principles, I nearly said that wrong then, um, into questioning techniques. And then we went back as a faculty and we discussed what we thought might be the most important things. But the first thing that came to us straight off was um, having time to plan for questionings and sometimes forgetting actually to plan that amount of time in your lesson to do questioning because it is so important. And then after we've done that, we talked a little bit about the types of techniques that we might use and how we would vary them throughout the lesson. So we looked at cold calling, and though it's not knocking on your door at 8 o'clock and then trying to pretend that the lights off so you don't answer, it's about picking students and asking them questions without hands up. And for some students, they find that very difficult. But if you've got a seating plan that's annotated and you know your students well, it's quite nice to pick the students so that you can challenge them and you can help other students fight in that nature. The second one, that classic think, pair, share which I'm not going to explain because I'm sure you all know what think pair share is. Um, the no opt out one is quite a good one. So sometimes we've all had it where we'll answer a question and then, then the tumbleweed goes across the floor and they say, don't know, okay, or they say something like that. Um, it's about giving the opportunity to ask somebody else, okay, or having a 20 second pause, which I'll put at the end, but I'm going to talk about it now. 20 second pause to say, right, have 20 seconds with the person next to you, come up with an answer and then ask that student again and then they feel a little bit more confident because now they've Somebody's given the answer and they don't feel like they're going to get it wrong. Um, probing, okay? So asking students a question and then saying why, and then saying, now can you give me an example? Could you give me another example? Or asking them to, to make that question better. And you can give time to that. So you can say, you know, have an extra couple of minutes with the people around your table, see if you can come up with a better answer or more, you know, better interpretation of that question. Um, and then finally, we came up with all these sort of little sort of gimmicky things, but are actually quite, we, we thought, quite important. The exit cards was a great one from my drama teacher, Alison Warren, who, who had the idea of giving students cards at the end of their, at the end of the lesson. They have to have answered all of the questions on that card before they exit, which I thought was a really nice idea of something to change. Bouncing the answer around, so if you don't know the answer, bounce it to somebody else, or bounce the question to somebody else to give more to the answer. Um, starter questions, we all agreed that in our year 11, particularly key stage 4 lessons, that we would have four questions at the start of every lesson regardless. Maybe they're to recap, maybe they're to look at specification, just to keep that on the forefront as they walk in. Um, um, and then the 20 second ones, I've, um, I've already answered. Um, that's it from me, thank you very much.